Alright everybody, how's it going? So I'm Tim here at Digital Llama, thanks for tuning in. So today I'm going to be counting down my top 10 favourite warriors in Magic the Gathering. This list is a bit of fun, nothing too serious, just like the channel. So it won't be a countdown of the best warriors, it will be my favourites. Before we get started though, time for our upkeep stack. There's a few free and easy ways that you can help support the channel. It's that subscribe button and notification bell or dropping a comment down below. Another way is by heading over to the channel's sponsor Arcane Cards. They're an awesome online card store stocking MTG singles and all kinds of sealed product. You can find the link to the shop down in the description as well as a discount code to get 10% off your first order. And with that said, let's head to the main phase. Kicking things off is an honourable mention for the best named warrior and possibly best named card ever, Barktooth Warbeard. I'm not sure what makes his beard warlike, but I like it. So on to my actual top 10. Boggart Ramgang was one of the first ever promo cards I got for my old LGS in Cardiff. It came out in Shadowmoor set and instantly caught my attention. A 3-3 for 3 with haste isn't bad at all and Wither is such a fun mechanic being able to take much larger creatures down a peg or two. Bramblewood Paragon was another card from around the same era, coming out just before in Morningtide. Now this is a warrior that cares about other warriors. Each further one comes in with a plus one plus one counter on it, on top of what else it might have, and then all creatures with plus one plus ones on them gain trample. And just by coincidence, there's an awesome full up promo version of the Paragon too. Ryan's Stout Arm rounds out our trip back to Lorwyn Block and is an incredibly fun card and commander. 4 mana for a 4-4 four four with lifelink is pretty cool, and then you pay a red and tap him. When you do, sack another creature and he deals that much damage to target player. It's fling on a body. So the bigger creatures you have, the more damage he does. If the creature you're flinging has a damage related ability, it won't trigger though. Kalitas, Blood Chief of Get, is more of a vampire than a warrior in terms of ability, but he still makes a list for being a badass. 7 mana is a lot, but when you can pay 3 black and tap him to destroy any creature, his value becomes clear. Oh, and you get a vampire token to boot, whose power and toughness match the destroyed creature. That's a huge swing in board state from just one creature. Crush, the Blood Braided, to me, looks a lot like the Predator. Not saying that's why I like this card, but it could be a factor. He gets big fast with his ability. Any creatures dying, including your own, trigger his plus one plus one hoarding ability. The only downside is he doesn't have any inbuilt evasion, so can be an easy target to pick off. Miri, Weatherlight Duelist, came out of the Commander 2017 Cat Tribal Precon. I've been running her in my Arabo deck, but is solid on her own too. She's got such a great ability that when she's attacking, your opponent can't be blocking with more than one creature. And as long as she's tapped, you can't be attacked by more than one. It totally shuts down big board states, and if you can find ways to keep her tapped, you're onto a winner. Rurik Thar, the Unbowed, is super powerful against decks that go heavy on the spells and non-creatures. That player will be taking 6 damage any time they cast a non-creature spell. The only downside to this, he has to attack every turn if able. Although he is a 6-6, so there's a good chance he'll do alright for himself in combat. Samut, Voice of Descent, is the most recent addition to the list. This is Samut pre-Spark mode. She's stacked with keywords, Double Strike, Vigilance, Haste, and to top it off, Flash. This means you could be getting a last minute blocker, or with the haste, you could use her untap ability to free yourself up another blocker or relevant ability. That she gives her other creatures haste too is just the cherry on top. Surak, Dragonclaw, is straight out of Khans of Tarkir and is super powerful. A 6-6 six -six with flash for 5 is already decent, but then he gives all our other creatures trample. And that's still not it. He can't be countered and all other creatures we control can't be countered. So that, combined with the flash, is an awesome combat trick, and just a great hoser against control. Maybe that's why I like the Prowling Serpapod so much too. Tolzimir Wolfblood is my final choice for favourites. A legendary elf warrior 
that gives us two anthem effects, one for green creatures and one for white creatures. What's really cool is you can tap it to create a legendary wolf token, which instantly benefits from the bonuses and comes in as a 4-4. Recently reprinted in the Slesnia Guild Kit, this is a really fun card to pick up. And there you have it, my top 10 favourite warriors in MTG. If you haven't already, please remember to hit the thumbs up button and consider becoming a patron of the channel, links up in the top right hand corner. Don't forget to check out Arcane Cards for your MTG singles, links down in the description and remember to use that 10% discount code. Thanks so much for watching, catch you all on the next one, there's new videos every Thursday and Sunday. Cheers!